These are some other cufflinks to the diamond trade that you desperately need to get into. Hi guys and welcome back to BMG TV with your girl Benny. I am back with another guest, Quincy. Yes. Yeah? Um, you also go by the name Kozo Medici, is that right? Kozo Medici. Medici, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, um, don't forget the chi. The chi. Don't yeah. forget the chi, I won't forget, yeah. I'm sorry. So, um, is, did you, how did you come up with Kozo Medici? Because that's not your real name, is no. it? No. Like, I was, in, I was in prison going through a spell where I wanted to start being creative and I needed a name in it. Mm -hmm. And I thought I needed a name, then I went to sleep and when I woke up, he was on the TV. So I just said, yeah, that was on the TV. Yeah, Cosimo Medici was on the TV. So Cosimo. I just changed the name. Oh, of it. you just changed Kept it. Kept the queue in that. Okay. Mm. I did a little bit of jazz into it. Yeah, exactly. Good? Okay, so um, just summarize what you do for those who don't know you. Um, I'm a film director, scriptwriter, producer, music artist, motivational speaker, mentor, stuff like that. Okay. You know what I mean? um, most people know you from Gangland. Mm hmm. Yeah, because that's where I, I know you from. And yeah. um, there was one part <laughs> in the show which I just thought was hilarious. He was um, talking to the presenter and um, he was going through, I think, was it Brixton? Brixton, yeah. He was going through Brixton and he was just like telling him about, you know, your younger years in Brixton. How he was, what happened, like, so yeah. I said. Yeah. And he was just doing loads of like um, sound effects. I like... never done the sound effects. <laughs> they done the sound effects. Oh, they did the sound effects, but yeah. yeah obviously, when... I just went. I mean, then he dramatised no, it. Yeah, 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 it was, I don't know, mm. we can't even put it He done well though, it's, 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 it sounded good when I heard it. You I was shocked. So? Yeah, it did, it did. It's, very, it's like a special effect. I thought it was really cringy, but it I made me laugh. Know. It made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like well, that. I, I, I had little use remixing tunes and sending me okay, yeah. with that noise in. Oh, really? Yeah, they, <laughs> they was gassed about it. They thought it sounded good. Yeah. Was there any um, so, I mean, backlash from that show? Not when for you me. Did that? No, nothing at all? Was it just positive stuff then? Well, that's all I saw, but you know, some people don't really say what they mean, but I didn't get that. You didn't? Okay, yeah. that's good. Um, so how did that opportunity come about? Was you contacted by... Yeah, I was just channel? contacted from a friend of a friend. And he just said to me, yeah, um, this guy wants to do a documentary about some person, one person from France, one person from UK, and one person from America, and we're going to show your life, what you're doing there and what you're doing now, mm -hmm. innit? So basically, I said, alright, then cool, that's good, that's, that's all good, isn't it? Because I don't mind me being personally t saying what I've already done. Yeah. It's already on the internet, innit? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's nothing new. It's nothing new, but the part where he's saying he'll show what I'm doing now, that's what drew me in. Do you know what I mean? So I just said, alright, no problem. So we've done that stuff on the street that you saw, and then I brought him to my mum's house and just sat in there and spoke about what, with what I'm doing now, innit? Yeah. And then, like a few days before it's supposed to be aired, he's phoning me. Well, not the exact guy, this, the friend of a friend. Yeah. He's saying, "Oh yeah, my man's in hiding because he's getting in trouble from the people's families because I think one of the guys died or something." Oh right, yeah. Yeah, and they didn't want the program to, to get aired, out. and okay. da, 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 da. and the next problem is basically what we done in your house. We're not able to show it because of the lighting, yeah. But I know for a hundred percent. When they shot it, the lighting was correct because we moved all around the sitting room, uh -huh. finding the right spot. <laughs> so I know the lighting was alright. So that, that was a lie then. It was a lie then. Obviously, they just wanted to portray everything in a negative way. Yeah, yeah. Instead of showing what Even I'm doing now. Even a positive light. Yeah, basically. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's one of the things you'd have been learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I got my own media company, so I just made it. I started making my own documentary about myself and yeah. just used it. Just to carry on. So would you say that Gangman kind of, um, even though you didn't get a chance to, you know, tell people what you're doing mm. now, it kind of still gave you um, that, let's say, pedestal to kind of um, well, go off that and yeah, do well, that, the thing of your. Well, it gave me an incentive, okay. yeah, to make my own documentary and tell people the real story that I wanted them mm -hmm. to know. That's what it done. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, in Gangland as well, you mentioned how in Brixton you had a uh, reputation mm -hmm. for being a bit of a bad boy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about, you know, what happened in your younger years or what kind of stuff well, you was involved in and stuff like that? Well, from, 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 from the beginning of my understanding of anything, yeah, I was born into a certain family, innit? Mm. Yeah? It wasn't my 
real family was well, not that my real family it wasn't from my dad because my dad he had mental issues and he had a nervous breakdown so I don't really know him okay yeah but then obviously I got placed into another family and then within that family there they were people that that family well my stepdad he actually ran you know like some people say they run the streets or mm. they run the area or they mm -hmm. run the road like I didn't ever see no one yeah be on top of him in nothing, oh, okay. in where he was in Brixton. Mm -hmm. Like he, in my eyes, he was the main person. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because I'm his stepson, I'm watching him, but I really didn't see nothing else yeah. that was coming be, close yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and I've seen other bad boys and all of that, and none of them was coming close to him in it. So in my mind, he was like total dominance, total in control in it. So that's what I saw and that kind of mentality that's what I inherited. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, as I as I hit the street from like probably around twelve, do you know what I mean? Because I got thrown out my house. I kind of adopted the same mentality of having no fear mm -hmm. of nobody, and I joined some gang called the Twenty Eights, and we just basically terrorized all the other neighborhoods, all the other gangs, and you know, that's how it was. And then from there, we just got into all different types of crimes, took all different types of drugs, mm -hmm. ended up robbing banks, post offices, and then just ended up going in and out of prison yeah. until the age of 21. And then I got involved in firearms and drugs. And then obviously you saw what happened on Gangland. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, ended up doing 14 years. And I had to do a decade of that 14 years in prison from 2001 to 2011. 10 years in prison. Mm. So how, how was that? I mean, how, how do you cope 10 years in well, prison? Well, the normal person might not be able to cope here, but because I was going in and out of prison from 15 to 20, mm -hmm. 21, that area. Yeah. And even before that, I was in secure units, oh, which right. is like prison for people under 15. Right, okay. You know, it's like a, it's not a children's home, it's a centre, but you're locked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in that kind of way, I kind of got conditioned to being in prison. So like, you was used to it maybe? Basically, okay. do you know what I mean? Because when I first went to prison, I was very violent, innit? Mm -hmm. And I was fighting everyone, officers, um, other prisoners, putting me on all types of controlled wings, controlled, controlled routines, stuff like that. Then as I got, by the time I got to my third sentence, I know how to play the game in prison, mm -hmm. innit? I know how to just humour the officers. Like, when they say something that might wind me up, I find another way of getting back at them, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like writing complaint forms. Yeah, so obviously when, when they know that you, you, you're good at complaint forms and know the procedures, they don't of, bother you, they don't bother you mm -hmm. because then they know that you can affect them. Yeah. So that's what I was on and that's how I kind of avoided too many altercations in prison mm -hmm. officers. Okay. How would you say, um, how, how does prison life compare to real life, you know, outside of prison? What are the differences? Well, or what, are there any similarities, would you say? Um, I mean, apart from the fact that, of course, you're, you're locked in and you, you don't really, you know, you can't do what you want to do. No, there's no similarities. At all. There's none. Every, like, because even something here yeah, that you wouldn't even care about out here, in there, really it'll be like the most biggest thing that would piss you off. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, like missing a phone call. You miss oh, phone yeah, calls yeah. out here every, every yeah, day. Yeah. You miss a phone call in there, you could end up being having in a fight with someone who made you miss that phone call. And then one thing could lead to another and then, you know, someone gets stabbed and then you get moved out of prison and then mm -hmm. your family has to travel all the way over there, all up north to visit you. And that's all the phone call. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's no similarities. And when you're in there, you learn how to live amongst snakes because everything's enclosed and you can't go nowhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was also going to ask about that, um, you know, your inmates, your prison inmates and stuff. Mm -hmm. how, is, how is it, because obviously, all I know from prison is just movies, right? Because mm -hmm. I haven't been to prison. Um, so is it like, in movies, they, they kind of show that people from the same ethnic backgrounds kind of seem to stick together. So you have the black people, you have the, well, I'm, I've been seeing like American movies, you know, so you have oh, black people, you know the Hispanics, etc., etc., and they kind of stick together. Is it, is it like that? Do you know what, yeah? Before, it was like, the Asian people stick together, they love their own food bowl. Yeah. The white people have their food bowl. The Turkish people have their own mm. food bowl. The own blacks people have their food bowl. Or some blacks are with some sprinkled around some people. Yeah. yeah, but then obviously 
when the Muslim thing came in, like more people started to come together okay. as one. Like you see whites, blacks and Asians all on one through God. But then the main English whites, they're still together. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? And so everything else kind of like integrated. Mm -hmm. But then the main English whites are still in their own section. So okay. it's like that really. And what, what group would you say you was in? I was in no group. You were just. I was just by myself. And do you think that was like the best thing for you? It was the best thing for me. Some people didn't like it, but. Did I people kind of look at you a bit be weary like because you wasn't like you know with with yeah, everyone? Yeah, yeah. People used to come and tell me, oh, I need to come to a mosque and I need to do that. I don't need to do nothing, bro. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And I just kept on my path because I knew, yeah. Most of these people that are telling me this stuff, they're not in prison for serious crimes like mm. me, and I know that I've been in the prison system. The whole of my life, time, yeah. yeah, and I know how the prison system works. I know everything you do. Like, if I hang around with you or I hang around with you, it gets written down. Mm. Do you they know watch what I mean? you. Everything gets written yeah, down because yeah. you, you, you can't miss nothing. Mm -hmm. Because the landing that we live on could be as slim as this like, your cell door's there, your cell door, all the way down there, and that's where you lot live. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the officers sit here at the end they watch you and just write there, everything yeah. down. Do you know what I mean? So if I'm if I'm in if I'm in prison for shooting at police and they've got me down as a career criminal, when I start hanging around with the brothers, yeah, who might have terrorist connections, yeah, I'm never gonna come off category A. Mm -hmm. I'm always gonna stay category A because in my in their mind, I'm worse than the whole lot of them. Yeah. Without the Muslim um, mm -hmm. stigma behind me already. So I knew for me to advance out of prison, I needed to, to sit back and do me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was strong enough to do that. Do you know what I mean? So. Okay. Um. What, what can? Do you think there's any good that can come out from you know, having been to prison? Yeah, like prison changed my life. Of course. If it wasn't yeah. for prison, I would be here talking to you now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Prison was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because I know, like, not the other two sentences, but the last sentence. The ten years. The decade behind prison. Yeah. In prison, yeah. If I didn't do that, I could be dead or just not coming out of jail for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that that 10 years that I've done was the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. So I can't really be angry at prison. You can only be angry at prison if is if you ain't got no if you ain't got no ambition. Do you know what I mean? Because if you go to prison and you got the right frame of mind, you can use prison to advance yourself when you come up. Yeah. Because education's free. Um, you can get on different programs that you'd have to probably pay out here to yeah. get on. It's all free. Mm -hmm. So if you know how to use your time, read books, go library and do all that stuff, by the time you come out here, you'd be an animal because most of the people are wasting their own time every day anyway. Yeah, definitely. Smoking weed, not doing anything. Yeah, so when you, when you yeah. came out of um, prison, what were your first steps into you know, becoming a better person and kind of leaving that bad boy life behind? How, how did well, you... That kind of started in prison, oh, right. but for me to kind of follow that up when I came out, because I know every time when people are in prison, they have bad, they have good intentions, mm -hmm. but then when they come out, they get corrupted by what's going on out there, by their friends, yeah. and um, not a lot of money and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get corrupted in it, so. To fall back into your bad habits. Yeah, yeah. So, so the best thing that happened to me again, which I wasn't happy at the time, is I got banned from London for like two years, innit? So I had to stay in Manchester for two years. So you couldn't, you couldn't go to London. I couldn't go to London. Yeah. So basically, that gave me time to reflect on what I wanted and to be find myself and be strong. Because you was away from. Because I was away from everybody. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I never had no, you know, like they call it peer pressure, mm -hmm. or you need to do this, or you need to get your gun back out and go and look for them guys, or I just was focused and started to build myself up and become stronger myself before yeah. I went back to London. So. That was the first steps for me. And then when you did finally go back to London, yeah. How but, did you, you know, make sure that you didn't fall back into that you know, the same routine that you was in before? Well, I didn't need to. When I was when I was in Manchester, I found a studio. I started recording music. Okay. So, as it was time for me to come back to London, I made a phone call to someone that I made a phone call to in prison. Like his name's Young Don, innit? I saw him on Big Brother, mm. on on the TV, innit? Rapping, innit? So when I saw him on Big Brother, I phoned him and said, yeah everything's looking good isn't it because in my mind when I wasn't writing and having my visions of what I wanted to do that was what I saw yeah do you know what I mean I didn't know about YouTube or mm -hmm. nothing I just saw this guy on TV and I thought yeah he can do it and can get there in it so by the time I made my, my music now I started to send it to him and he said yeah that's the tune that's the tune that's the tune we shoot the videos so when it's time for me to come to London I went to London 
shot the videos and they got received well and then that just gave me the focus and the energy to stay on that path. Yeah, to just continue. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he helped me when I came out so to stay focused. So would you say focused. that you kind of just kept yourself busy doing something positive or something yeah. that you enjoyed yeah, to I, keep yourself out of trouble? Yeah, because well, at first I, help, I was helping him with his mood, with his like videos and that. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. you're telling me to like take control, do a bit of directing, and that's what kind of got me into the directing and film. Because okay. by the time he told me, yeah, do this and do that, and then I saw the vision of what I created yeah. without me even even trying to Try claim it, yeah. or anything. It was just like, yeah, I was just I just stood here and said, yeah, you stand there, you stand there. When the car drives in, you do this, you do that. And when I saw how it came out, I thought, yeah, actually, I can I can, I can do yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that got me into directing and that and mm -hmm. making films. Okay, so let's say, what are the top three things you've learnt? Um, let's, let's not, let's just generalise it. Top three things you've learnt throughout your whole life? Top three. So I know, you, of course, you've learnt a lot of things, but top three things. Well, the, 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 the top three things that mean the most to you and that have had the most impact on your life now? Definitely, if you believe it, yeah, enough, you can definitely achieve it. I know that because everyone's told me stuff, oh, you know, when I was young, oh, you're never going to see 21 years age, mm. da, 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 da. And that's like, common, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't believe that. from as well, so. Yeah, like from the black community as yeah. well. Like, they're telling you that, like, you, boy, you're never going to see 21 behaving like that. Like, before telling me that, before they sit me down and have a conversation, and what well, they want to tell you that, that you're not going to live. So I heard that, all that washing the mouth stuff mm. and all that, but by the time I got to where I wanted to and started to believe in what i done, what I wanted, and start seeing it happening out here and be affecting out here. Um, I know that anything you strongly believe in, you can make it happen, mm -hmm. regardless of anything. Do you know what I mean? And the second thing I learned is yeah, money is not everything. Money can't stop your dream if you really want it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If you believe, yeah, the God or universe will find a way for you to do it. But you just have to believe in that. Yeah. Yeah. And thirdly, is never ever look down on nobody because that same person you look down on is this person that will help you because something happened to me when i was young mm -hmm. and it was a trap that helped me out of the situation well not even a trap like a homeless person it mm -hmm. helped me when my family kind of weren't there to help me mm -hmm. uh, a person like that helped me and even through my prison sentence it was always the person that helped me that i didn't think that everyone else thought no 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 don't fuck with yeah, them yeah, yeah. it was always the, up, the opposite when mm -hmm. it was time to come to help me. So I will ever never look down and I always help where I can. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No matter what someone else says or what the crowd say, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? If I can do it, I'll, I'll do it because yeah. I, I got treated the same. Okay. And um, what message would you give to, you know, the, the younger viewers who are, you know, probably, you know, um, from bad areas or might be involved in criminal activity and um, maybe looking for a way out but don't feel like they can get out because, you know, it's so hard nowadays to kind of come out of that once you're in it, especially if you're in it so deep. Yeah, well... Like, I mean, I, I feel like you was in it quite deep, yeah. right, when you were younger. Yeah. What advice would you give, you know, those people who are trying to get out of that and make a life for themselves? Yeah. Well, I'd say if there's youths out there who really want to get out of the cycle and find another way, they just need to contact us real life drama series, we've got everything going on that we didn't have a chance to tap into or have people to help us. So if there's any youths who feel like they want a better way to live or they even need someone to talk to, they can come to us. You know what I mean? Like we're Real Life TV UK. You can find us anywhere, Twitter, Instagram. Do you know what I mean? We do acting, editing, musicians, mm -hmm. everything you can think of. Like there's a place there for everybody. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're not alone, do you know what I mean? Like, like we was, like, there's a place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So just contact us, you know what I mean? Okay, so you mentioned you um, do a drama series, mm. um, real life drama series. Um, how did that come about? Um, basically, you know, one time I moved into a new flat, yeah, and I was just chilling out in there for a while, mm. just chilling. And when I was in there, I started to go through all my prison paperwork. And I started to find little bits here, little bits here, little ideas that I wrote down. So through that, I just started to put one and two pieces together. And then just as I done that, coincidentally, I just came across a set of cameramen. Okay. That young Don knew, he said, yeah, just you two link up, he's got an idea. And then from then, 
we just kept rolling, just, just kept like rolling, you, yeah, just yeah. kept rolling, kept, kept rolling. Like, basically, it was, I knew the beginning and I knew the end. Okay. So, I probably didn't plan to shoot 19 episodes in the first series, mm. but I ended up doing that. And that was because, obviously, there were so many ideas, uh, you know, around and, you know, brains and yeah. stuff, everything just bouncing off each other. Mm. So, it was like, turned it into 19 episodes, turned into a whole series that was successful, yeah. we made the second series and then now we're on the third series, yeah. so. It's really cool. Mm. So is it, okay, so it's, it's called Real Life Drama mm -hmm. Series, so is it actually your real life or does it, do no, you incorporate some like storylines as well? It's not, it's not my real life, it's just, um, just it's just inspiration. Okay. It's inspiration from the community that I live in and from the people that I've grown up with around and the people I'm around at this moment in present time. Mm. Just things I've seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things that maybe my friends have been through. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Some things I might have felt, but I've just pictured it in a different way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's real life situations that people in the communities like us may have to encounter or have been through. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you saying as well at the start of my TV that you're a mentor. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you mean by that? Do you well, mentor the youth? Or? Yeah, well basically there's, there's quite a few youths in our, in our drama series mm -hmm. and now we've put... So there's a lot of people who, who are involved in this? Yeah, there's lots like of people. Thing, no, 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 there's okay. lots of people. There's, a, there's at least what? In this series, I've probably got a WhatsApp group with 40 people in. Okay. There's actors. And, 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 and the thing is, none of these people were actors. Do you know what I mean? Maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. like, all these other people, like they've been turned into actors. Okay. You know, and the ones that have been solid, they've come through all yeah. three series. Yeah. So even that in itself is mentoring. Mm -hmm. And obviously we have also got a group called RLE. Yeah? Okay. Real Life Entertainment. And a soundtrack to the drama series, they're all featured in, and that's mm -hmm. the local use that are in. The, um, drama series. Yeah. Um, we'll be releasing that on the twenty fourth of March at our launch party. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. So you do music as well then? Yeah, we do music as well. Okay. Um, yeah. and are you like so? Would you do? Are you an artist or do yeah, you produce I'm a, music? No, I'm a, I'm an artist. You're an artist. Okay. Yeah. And I, I write songs for other people too. Okay, so you're a writer as well. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking to you know maybe collaborate with any other artists maybe. Yeah, we've got some collabs coming out. Um, okay. Got a tune called Murder Team with Cha Ching Ching. Um, got a couple of tracks with Dean Marsh. Okay. Um, Young Don. Okay. But what I what I really like to do, the reason I've done the Cha Ching Ching one is because I went to Jamaica and filmed real life. But I just try and concentrate on what's going on around me mm -hmm. and just concentrate on the youths because they're the future, you know, yeah. they're running around chasing all these other people. Yeah, you forget what's going on around you, you know what I mean? Life, and yeah. then later on, they're the ones that are going to have us later on. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just put all my attention. Okay. You know I mean? So um, aside from the drama series, you also do workshops with the youth, is that right? Yeah, um, acting. Acting workshops. Acting workshops. So yeah. when you do those workshops, um, you know, do you, do you, um, do, so do you, if you go to the workshops, do they kind of get involved in the drama series as well? Through the workshops, yeah, the, the ones that stay on, yeah, they get involved. Yeah. And all the ones that stay on do, you know, some some come and you know they think, but that's not our problem. Mm -hmm. We just concentrate on the ones that want to be there. Yeah. And then they go through to the drama series, and then them ones you see them on the drama series, they yeah. come back later on. But by then the auditions are finished, the workshops are so over. Do you know what I mean? Because we're filming right now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So when you have a chance, you need to just take it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because sometimes it's not always there. So you've got a nice t-shirt on there. Yeah. yeah. This is the clothing brand, Real Life Couture. Like your own clothing brand? Yeah, yeah. That's okay, when did you launch that? Probably around a month ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's still, it's still new? Yeah, it's still new, okay. yeah. You can go to Real Life Couture on Instagram and you can find out. There's all different varieties. Of what, is it available to like, purchase yet? Or? Yeah, 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 it's available to purchase. So there's a website, yeah. everything? No, no, there's no website. No you website, can, yeah. You can, you can DM us. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Slide into DMs, you might get a t-shirt or a jacket. Okay, oh, there's jackets you know as well. Yeah, there's okay. jackets. Yeah. yeah. What do you have for us you know, planned in the future? and What can we expect from you? Well, I know right now you're doing the drama series. Any, anything else that's coming out soon? 
Well, I plan to make a different type of series soon based around women. And I'm planning on bringing out a story about my, about my life. Okay. About my story from when I was a child up until now. Yeah. As a drama series or as a film? No, just as a film. Okay, that's cool. So there might be part one and part two because okay. my life's a bit... Long. Long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, go yeah, with yeah. long, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then I've got another film called About to Ball that's going to be coming out with, um, in conjunction with me, Jaja PDC and Corey Johnson. Shout out to them. Shout out to you guys. Yeah. And there's another film which I'm not going to talk about. Oh, is that exclusive, isn't it? Yeah. But you will be seeing that soon. Okay. It's called Karma. Karma. Oh. That's all you need to know. Sounds good already. I'm excited. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anything else? Film wise? Yeah. That's it for this year. For this year? Yeah, and then obviously season three of the drama series. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously, you've heard me say the third series, but the third series that's out now is called 2.5, not three. So by the time I do season three, that's going to be the fourth series. Okay, so why did you have it 2.5 and not three? Because. By the time I get to three, that's when it, big business. When it's like I just business. needed like, I just needed to remember I didn't, I didn't yeah, I didn't know how to do this. I learned it naturally, like yeah, so. Yeah. Them three series, that's like my university. Okay. So is it kind of like test runs maybe? Yeah, I learned. So I know now, as I'm finishing this off and I'm finding out how to get better, talking back all the feedback, mm -hmm. all the critique. I know now. By the time we go to season three. It's going to be big business and it's going to be the best thing that I could output basically. Okay. And um, for you know you guys who are watching, you want to get involved in the drama series, how can they get involved? Just go to Twitter and just, you know, message me at Cosmo Medici. Um, is that your Twitter? Yeah. So Twitter, um, Instagram, all of that, tell them what. Yeah. So my Instagram is Real Life TV UK and I am Medici. Yeah. All one word. And my Twitter is at Cosmo Medici, and Facebook is Real Life TV UK, and Cosmo Medici. You can catch me at any of those, or just email me at Cosmo Medici at gmail.com. Cool. Mm. I think that's about it from us. Thank you so much for coming no in problem. and speaking to us. It's been a great, great interview. And okay. um, yeah, just say bye to everyone now. Uh -huh. Bye. See you guys. I'll be up the NGTV as well. <laughs> <laughs>